What's up guys, it's Jerry with Midstate Engineering and today we're going to be going over how to take a robot to back up on a FANUC controller, a FANUC robot. Um, so we're going, to, um, we're going to go over how to take a backup and how to restore from a backup. And this will be the all the above backup option. So let's get right into it. It's going to be a short and sweet video today. So let's, um, let's get straight into it. So first thing I'm going to ask, um, if you are trying to take a robot backup, get a USB that is completely empty. I don't want anything on this USB. 8 gigabyte, 4 gigabyte, it's fine. It could be 4 gigabyte. I wouldn't probably probably wouldn't go anything less than 4 gigabytes. Um, I here have a SanDisk. Um, it's the recommended USB for a uh, for Fanuc. They recommend the SanDisk. Doesn't really matter. I've had some issues with other types of USBs before in the past, um, but. Uh, it shouldn't really matter what type of USB you have. So we have our MTSU USB here. I'm going to set it aside for now. So here we have the teach banner. Okay. You can see where my cursor is. I'm pressing the, uh, uh, you can see it's highlighted here. We're going to press menu. And then we're going to go down to option seven for file. So menu file. And then we're going to go to file again. So let me show you that again. Menu file, file. This is the one we want. Depending on what software option you have, it might be um, option one, SS file. Just know that it's menu, file, file. So we are, this is probably what you're going to see. You're going to see something that says F, FR. You're going to see all these different file types. The first thing we need to determine is where are we going to stick our flash drive? Because you have two options. And some people get this confused, which is why I want to be very clear when I say, First thing you want to do is you hit utilities. I believe that is F5. So F1, F2, F3, F4, F5 for utilities, set device, and we have two options to put it on a USB. USB on disk, USB disk, that is the controller, USB on TP, that is the USB on the teach pennant. And I will show you starting with USB disk, excuse me, on UD1. So let's take a look at that. So when it says UD1, it is asking you to put the USB on the controller. That is UD1. UT1, USB on TP. That is the teach pennant. And that is right here to the right side of the teach pennant. That is UT1. It even says USB. So if you select UT1, then make sure the flash drive is in the teach pendant. But if you select UD1, make sure that it is the flash drive is inserted into the port on the robot controller, the big giant controller. <clears throat> Excuse me. So we're going to plug it into UD1, UT1, sorry. I have to do this on my laptop, so it's going to be look a little different, but we'll go over it. We'll go over everything. So let me pull back my teach pin on. And we're going to select USB on TP. Again, that's a USB on the teach pendant. The next step. So we menu file, file we get here. We set our device. We select the USB on the teach pendant. I click it or I press enter. Sorry. That's what you would do on the actual teach pendant. You could click it with your finger or I recommend just pressing enter on the teach pendant. So set device, we highlight UT1, and then press enter. Now you can confirm that UT1 is selected because it'll show up in here in the top left. The very next thing we're going to do is we're going to create a directory. We're going to create a folder and we're going to name it. So back to F5 for utilities, make DIR, make directory, option number four, and then I'm going to press enter on the teach pendant, words, uppercase, lowercase, options, keyboard, that's what I like to use. So we highlight options keyboard and then we press F5. If you press enter, invalid directory, invalid directory. You have to come over here, press F5 for keyboard. I'm going to name this robot one. And then I press enter. You're going to have a keyboard that pops up when you're done. Just press enter. Now you can see that we are in fact inside that folder, robot one's folder. I'm going to go backup option eight all the above and press enter it'll say delete ut1 robot one and back up all files yes that's what we want to do so click yes 
and it's going to go proceed to a backup. It's going to do it a lot faster on my laptop than it's going to be on the robot controller. You see, it's already done before I even finished it. If you want to double check and make sure the file is actually backed up, you can select and highlight all files and press enter, and you can see all the files are there. Great. Perfect. You're done. The next step would be, now it's in the, uh, you don't have to, never mind this step. This is where it's a little different since I'm on the uh, uh, robo guide. To be able to, to email it to somebody, we have to compress this file. So I'm going to right click inside my USB, right? Plug it into a laptop, come over here, compress to zip file because you can't just email that folder. It's too big. We have to compress it. Now you can, now you'll be able to email this and send it to whoever needs it or whatever. <clears throat> so now let's restore from a backup. Remember, this is just all the above. We're not talking image, we're just talking on all the above backup. So when somebody says I need an all the above backup, this is what we mean. And uh, especially for the robot engineers, why we want this is because we can restore a robot from the all the above backup, which is super great and very helpful for troubleshooting. Now, let's get out that. Let's um, let's try to do it like we were um, in the real world. So you would have to. So now you have the zip folder. So say somebody emails you the zip, right? and you want to restore from that. We need to extract it. So you click extract all, extract, yada, yada. I have to do it a little differently because of security. So we would extract all these files and then it would pop out a regular folder like this. Click it, make sure everything's there. I'm gonna take this and I'm gonna put it onto my USB. Okay, so now somebody emailed it to you, you unzipped it and now you're putting it onto a USB. This next step is critical, and it will really help you out, especially if time is of the essence. So I am going to highlight everything inside of this USB, inside of this Robot One folder. Remember, this folder is empty. I'm going to open it. I'm going to highlight it. I'm going to drag it over to the USB. You can see it's copying. We're going to take all the files inside that folder, and we're basically going to remove the folder. We're going to remove the middleman. I'm going to go back to that Robot One folder. I'm going to delete it. Now, the only thing that's inside my USB is all those files. This is very important for when you go to restore. You don't have to worry about these other folders. That's all part of the robot backup. But the folder that it was created with, the directory, when you put it on the USB, I just want, or you just want the files, okay? So um, let me do this for the robot. Delete this. Take this to UT1. Copy, copy. So I'm basically doing the same thing, but for a uh, robo guide. So now we have our USB and we're plugging it back into UT1. Back on the tablet here. So we're taking that USB. We're going to restore it. We got our files. We take the USB. We shove it into the USB on the teach pendant. Now. Depending on what kind of files, like if you want to load everything, you can load everything, or you can go down and find the, T, the teach pendant programs you want. On the right hand side, it shows you that they're TP programs, SV is a system variable. If you just want to load um, a single file, then you can just go to that and load that file. If it's a system variable, it'll have to be loaded in a controlled start, which is why the next step, when we go to restore the entire all of the files from the all the above backup, we just want to restore everything or as much as we can. We need to do that in a controlled start so that we can load some of these system variables. Sometimes it could be important. So on the teach pendant, we're going to press the FCTN for function. You can see I'm highlighting it here. I press it. I go zero next. And then I go down here to cycle power. And this might look different depending on what controller you have. If it's a different type of controller, like the R30IB Mate Plus, I believe it says start mode. Click it, press enter on the teach pendant. I'm going to press enter. You might have to press options. This is where you can select control. 
And for, for this controller, as soon as I click it, it's going to cycle power and it's going to boot back up in a controlled start. On the other type of controller, the R30IB Mate Plus, I believe, don't hold me to that, you click start mode, you select you want to start it in control, and then it's going to say, a message is going to pop up and say it's waiting for you to cycle power. Then you have to manually go over to the controller. Let's pull that back up. You have to manually go to the controller, turn it off, turn it back on, and it will boot into a controlled start. And if all of that still doesn't get you in a controlled start, you can hold down the F1 and F5 keys on the tablet. This F1 and F5, you hold those button down and have somebody cycle power to the robot, turn it off, and turn it back on. And that will get you into the controlled start that you need to be in. Okay, so let's get this guy in the controlled start. Options, control. We have our USB, it's plugged into UT1. And we're going to want to load all the files that are on there. So you're going to notice a menu that looks a little different. This might look a little different on the actual teach pennant, but the process is still the same. We're going to press that menu key again. We're going to go down to option five for file, and we're going to press enter on the teach pennant. I'm changing this real quick, so make it a little harder for me. So we see that it says FR, whatever. We want to go back to pressing F5, set device. We're going to go next, unless you put it in the controller, UD1, but no, not this time. We put it in UT1, teach pennant. So we're going to go next, USB on TP, USB on teach pennant, and then press your enter. Freeze, <laughs> because this is where a lot of people mess up including myself, for a very long time. Because we got rid of the root, we got rid of that folder, and we took all the files inside that folder, and we made it the main root of the USB. There's no other folders for these files to be into. It is the main. What's on that USB is the entire backup, not just the folder and then the backup. Because we did it like that, we can come here, we can click load, and it's going to ask you load UT1, and you can click yes. If you did not do that process of making it your main route, if you didn't do that, it's going to say directory not process, directory not process, directory not process. So instead, what you'd have to do is click enter and load every file individually. Not fun. I'm going to tell you right now, not fun. So let me get back up. Let me back up to that screen we were just in. Gosh, what's a faster way of doing this? I mean... Probably go here, da, 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 number eight, da, da, da. So back to where we were. Okay. Now if you did that step I mentioned, we press load, we pray it, and we click yes, and it's gonna start loading those files. This is how I do it. I don't know necessarily know if it's the best way to do it, but I know that it's the best way that I have found. So if we have another robot that's gonna be doing the exact same thing as a previous cell, this is how I restore that robot, that brand new robot, no programs in it. This is how I restore it exactly this process. So when you start loading files, what I do is I overwrite the files that I can and I skip the files that I can't and that's how I do it every time. And it works fine. It works fine. There are some files that you can't, you just can't load because they're a different type of, you know, whatever. System variable, there's certain types of variables you can't load. I literally go through this process and I skip the files I can't load. I overwrite the can ones I can. You do that for about five minutes and then you'll get done. I'm not going to sit here and do that because it's very boring. When you're done, you can press function, the function key here, start cold, yep, and then press enter on the teach pendant, and then it should boot back up. And that's how you load a um, an all the above backup on a FANUC controller. Thank you guys for tuning in. I appreciate your time. If you like the content, hit up the sub, and if you want to see some more stuff like this, uh, be sure to like my content.